Mona Lisa by Matthias Moran. Introduction. The Mona Lisa is one of the most significant and well-known, if not the most significant and the most well-known works of art of all time. The Mona Lisa is an oil painting on a poplar wood panel by Leonardo da Vinci. It was painted sometime between 1503 and 1519 when Leonardo da Vinci was living in France. The exact date is still unknown. It hangs in the Louvre Museum located in Paris, France. With this painting and in this presentation, we are going to dive deeper into the detail into a detailed description and analysis of the principles and elements of design utilized, look at interpretations and meaning, and lastly evaluate it with the three philosophies of evaluation. Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa is a historically significant piece of art that utilizes the elements of design to create principles of design in order to convey a meaning of wealth and beauty. It can also be evaluated with the three theories of art criticism. Description Formal Qualities Da Vinci used a media of painting with oil paint on a poplar wood panel, as mentioned before, and the size of it is 30 inches by 20 inches. This work is representational because it, re it is representative of a real woman in real life. It is a 2D work of art made with 3D effects. The elements of design utilized are what help form this 3D feel. The use of contour lines is evident in the whole piece because you can notice the outline of the landscape in the background and the outline of the woman's face and body. Crosshatch lines are also present and noted in the shading in her face and hair and clothing. Da Vinci mainly used organic shapes, which is evident because he had to in order to make the face and body of the woman as well as the background. The use of value is also noted, and the use of high and low contrast is evident within the different shades within this piece. The main focus is the woman, and the face of the woman is a lot brighter and more noticeable than the background, which has more darker colors. We also see the use of implied texture which is noticed on the clothing and hair of the woman because of the very meticulous shading Da Vinci utilized. The use of different colors is evident and we can see that the darker colors he uses throughout the whole painting set a sort of somber mood. Description Subject The Mona Lisa depicts the upper half of a woman's body with a landscape background. The background contains a body of water and what seems to be a forest or a batch of trees. If you look closely, you can also see a glimpse of a circular yellow figure which seems to be a sun. The woman is wearing an, a subtle clothing, is wearing subtle clothing and seems to be an average lady with nothing too special happening in her appearance. She has a pale complexion with brown hair which has very which was very common for the time. The visual qualities of the painting are mainly texture and tones. As mentioned before, there's implied texture on her hair and her clothing. And the viewer knows what these are supposed to feel like and that these are supposed to have different textures and da Vinci does a great job of portraying that. The background adds contrast to the larger emphasis of the woman and the darker tones of the background emphasize the sort of glowing that the woman's skin appears to have. Description Facts The Mona Lisa <clears throat> is a portrait painting. As mentioned before, it was created sometime between 1503 and 1519 and da Vinci painted it when he was living in Florence, Italy. <clears throat> the exact time frame uh, during which he was actually working on this is still unknown, but it was between 1503 and 1519, and we know he was working on it intermittently for several years. And also, it was found in the studio when he died. <clears throat> the piece was created during the Renaissance, which likely had a great influence on the subjects of the painting. The Mona Lisa was commissioned by a wealthy man in Florence, and named Fran in Florence named Francesco del Giocondo. The purpose of the commission is unknown, but it's likely that the man did it for his new wife because we know that he had married a woman named Lisa. Analysis. The principles of design within the piece include emphasis and subordination, unity, contrast, and symmetrical balance. The emphasis of the painting is the woman that the viewer's eyes are naturally drawn to because of the size of her relative to the rest of the figures in the piece. The darker colored background or negative space serves as subordination for the glowing face of the woman, which is the emphasis of the piece. This negative space is made attractive to the viewer by the ambiguity of it. I mentioned before that I thought the background was a body of water surrounded by forest, but another viewer may see it differently. There is unity in this piece because of the repetition of colors used because the darker shades complement each other and make the whole piece feel like one connected, cohesive work. However, we don't see much variety in the colors used. There's but there is clear contrast in the piece. 
There's a size difference between the items in the background and the woman. Not only that, but the colors also help create contrast. The darker, more dull colors of the background help accentuate the bright glowing face of the woman, which helps emphasize the main focus of the painting, <clears throat> which is the woman. There is not much noticeable, notable balance in this painting other than the symmetry observed in the face of the woman. Interpretation. Obviously, there are many in different interpretations of the meaning of the Mona Lisa, because just like all other art, different people have different interpretations. The most common interpretation is that it is representative of wealth and beauty. This is because, as mentioned before, it was commissioned, and because it was commissioned by a wealthy man for his wife, who the wife was the model for the painting, the piece of a wealthy woman with an imaginary background. <clears throat> it is representative of beauty because it is of a woman, and women throughout history have always been a symbol for beauty especially during the 1500s, which is when the piece was painted. Not only that, but also the beauty of the woman herself has been interpreted by many, by many in different ways. And it sparks the question, if the Mona Lisa wouldn't have been of a white woman, would she still be considered beautiful? Would the whole painting still be considered beautiful? Da Vinci wanted to express imaginary beauty, and he was more successful in doing so with the dreamlike background and the emphasis of a woman. I would have to say that the reaction that d that Da Vinci wanted was successful. Mona Lisa, the title is, is significant in describing the meaning because it is the name of a woman and one would assume that someone wouldn't paint a picture of an unattractive woman. If one just hears that a painting is titled the name of a woman, they're going to assume that that woman is most likely going to be attractive. The formal qualities and the elements and principles of design further emphasize and detail the beauty of the woman in the painting. Judgment Formal Theory The duller, more subtle colors used in the background and the brighter colors of the face of the woman enhance the main subject, which, of course, is the woman. The brighter color used for her face makes her stand out more, and Da Vinci uses unity by having darker value, but creates variety by mainly using different organic shapes to form figures. He also uses emphasis and subordination by having the background serve as subordination for the focal point of the piece. We also exhibit texture with the smooth brushes and crosshatch lines used to create the clothing and hair of the woman. <clears throat> Judgment Contextual Theory I would say that the Mona Lisa cannot be evaluated with contextual theory because it is a mere portrait of a wife of the man who commissioned it. It does not serve the interests of the people, church, state, business, or politics, and neither, neither does this piece help advance any humanitarian cause. It is simply just a painting of a woman in front of a landscape background. Although this was created during the Renaissance times, it does not advocate for any of the new ideas or challenges that were being sprung during that time. Judgment Expressive Theory At first glance, the viewer is entranced by the gaze and smile of the woman and filled with emotion. Then, we become so interested in the depth of the painting and mystery of this random woman. The dark value instantly creates a somber mood within the viewer, and we can't let go. The painting is also realistic because it is, of, because it is a painting of a woman, but it feels more realistic because of the great use of implied texture from da Vinci. This piece does not, emotionally, this piece does not feel emotionally fabricated in any way because da Vinci did indeed see this woman in real life, I assume many times, in order to create this painting. However, Da Vinci's feelings and emotions of this painting cannot be determined just by looking at which, just by looking at it, which makes it an excellent painting under the evaluation of expressive theory. However, I would determine that the formal theory is the most efficient in evaluating the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. Conclusion. Now we have covered and completed a formal analysis on the great work of Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. I specifically described the work in great detail, looking at its formal qualities, its subject, and the facts about the painting, then dove deep into an analysis of the painting, looking specifically at the principles of design used and how the elements of design used help create the principles of design that were used. Following the analysis, I broke down the meaning of the piece and looked at common interpretations. Lastly, I evaluated the piece using the three philosophies of evaluation and concluded that it could best be evaluated with the formal theory. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you greatly enjoyed your, my presentation.
And lastly, here is my citations.